You may be wondering why I'm just standing out here next to the woods. I can't wait to share it with you. We all go through different stages as bass anglers. Our first fish, our first major equipment purchase, that first season when we start to catch fish on more days than we catch nothing. But there's still one thing that really separates us from the very best anglers in the world, and no, it's not lures. It's really understanding how bass move and migrate. I will never forget when I was taught this lesson, okay? I was doing a lot of fishing down in the Ozarks all the time, and hey, this is a shout out to Lynn. He's just a master on Bull Shoals, Norfolk, Table Rock, Lake of the Ozarks. And he taught me this lesson, and I never, ever forgot it. He told me when we were driving down the road one day, heading off to fish, he said, Steve, he goes, what, you know what I've really noticed? is he said you kind of go to the traditional spots but you but you're lacking in understanding of how those fish how those bass get to those spots and he said you know what i do and then he kind of slowed down and we looked out the windows he said i imagine the entire world underwater and that was kind of interesting and then he said the thing that really struck me he said if you follow deer, okay, if you follow other animals as they move around in the woods and through fields and these types of things, bass do almost the exact same types of movements and patterns. And it's like a light went on. I started to observe deer movements, how they use edges, how they travel hills, all these types of things that exist under the water, but we can see them and observe them as we're going about our daily life. So I'm talking about let's break down overpasses, which would be like a bridge, or fields, which would be the same as a flat. And then we have hills and valleys, which would be like points and ditches and ledges under the water. So the next time after I had talked to him, the next time I was out on my own and I caught a bass, I remember thinking, how did you get here? And it's real important that this entire video is about migration and movement, not necessarily feeding patterns, but how those bass get to those very typical, stereotypical feeding areas and their seasonal movements. So that's what I'm breaking down here today. Because of this light bulb moment and because of what Lynn told me, I started to notice when I was fishing the most subtle things, the most subtle places that bass use to migrate. Let's talk about an edge first, like I'm standing right here. If you notice lots of terrestrial creatures, your deer, coyote, turkeys, those types of things, they travel down edges all the time. Your fence rows or right here I've got this between a yard and an actual start of the woods here at my house they travel this edge constantly well edges under the water are perfect migration routes as well maybe it's literally something as hard and physical as a seawall that provides a hard edge that bass can travel along maybe it's more subtle maybe it's the edge between a drop off and a weed line Maybe it's the edge between two different types of cover. So once you start to really think about edges as travel routes, migration routes, it just opens up the entire world, especially when you break it down to understanding as they're going in and out of seasonal patterns, seasonal locations, is they're going to be somewhere along this edge. Okay, between deeper water and a traditional spawning flat. They're gonna be along that edge somewhere, and now I know where I need to search. This next one is one of my favorites, small hills. Okay, so I live in a reclaimed strip mine area, so these are all spoil piles. And right here behind me is just a small hill, you know, maybe it's just 12, 13 feet high. And when I'm out and about in the yard or looking out my windows, almost 100% of the time, Okay, deer are traveling down here at the bottom of this small hill or the very, very top. Seldom are they traveling right along the middle of this spoil pile or hill. If they are, it's because they're going up or they are coming down, but they travel the top and they travel the bottom. So how can this apply 
to our bass fishing. Well, if we have a gradual tapering point, hitting the top of that point or down to the side where that point starts to, to level off, okay, those would be two key areas that I target for sure. Now, in a lot of highland reservoirs where these points are much more defined, they have much bigger drop-offs, that's a little different situation. But when, when it comes to these small hills, or I should say small humps, I run across this all the time when I've got a rock pile. They're either sitting right there on the top or they're down on the bottom edge of it. Now, like I said, these are smaller rock piles, maybe a pile that's only, you know, two, three feet in height, not some big, massive one. Then in those situations, they could be more staged along the sides. But when you've got these small changes in bottom contour, I really like to hit the top of it and then, and then down on that bottom edge. This next one was a big game changer for me, and that was really understanding ditches, okay? So as you're walking through the woods and you're driving down the highway and, and you're looking out there at the world around us, the smallest depressions, the slightest ditches are oftentimes major travel corridors for wildlife. They could be right down there in the bottom of that slight depression or just up onto the top edge of it, much like a creek channel, right? But I'm talking small ditches here. That same thing applies to bass fishing all the time. If you happen to fish a highland reservoir or, or most reservoirs, as a matter of fact, that are, you know, man-made, they're flooded impoundments. A lot of times the ditches that you see up on the shoreline continue way down under the water and they may have been created from runoff or, you know, some sort of construction process when the impoundment was being made. But if you see a ditch up on the shoreline, it rarely stops right there at the water's edge. It will continue. It may not be quite as defined because maybe it's silted in a little bit. You can find bass stacked in those ditches. I have had tremendous success with this on places like Kentucky Lake, uh, Grand Lake of the Cherokees, where just the smallest depression, this ditch, can, can just hold a pile of fish as they're moving, migrating from shallow water to deep water or vice versa. Now let's talk about bridges. This is really interesting, at least I think so. We know that bridges are tremendous places to catch bass, but what about if they're heavily pressured? or the fish just don't seem to be on the bridge in that particular day. Where do they go? Well, driving down the road in the Midwest really taught me this, okay? So if you've been through the Midwest very much, you've probably noticed that about every single overpass has a pond right there next to it. Why? Because when those overpasses were built, they needed to get the dirt for the approaches from somewhere. So they would dig it right there next to the road and then it'd fill in and make a pond. And it really struck me one day that how can I apply this to my fishing bridges? Okay, now I'm not saying that there's gonna be a pond under the water or a big bowl depression right near every single bridge on a, on a reservoir, lake, or impoundment of some sort. But when you take a look at that down current side, okay, where that current washes through that bridge, usually in one of these areas here, there's going to be something that's going to hold some fish. It could be a little bit of a depth change, okay, just a little bit deeper than maybe on the flat that's out there near those bridges or causeways. Maybe some big old tree got washed through in a flood and just hung up there on the edge of a creek channel, but there's usually something there on that downstream side where that current was coming through and then it creates a, creates a wash or, or something. I have found that if I really focus on these particular spots, there can be bass really piled up in those areas and they're moving from there up to the bridge when I want to more actively feed and get in some more current and then they'll back down off of it as well. Now this works best on bridges where along the causeways or the approaches it's just a very shallow flat in this area. If you have good depth, good water depth along all that riprap approaching a bridge by all means fish that whole thing all the way down. That is a great migration route. But if it's just like foot and a half, foot and a half, foot and a half of like just silty mud almost all the way up to the actual bridge, 
check these spots right here and I think you're gonna find that you might have just located a honey hole. If you find any of this helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. And hey, if you would like to watch a video on how to maybe double or triple your catch rate, go ahead and check this one out right here. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For The Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.